texted her. I'm like, if he gives us the lawnmower, do not say yes. We do not want the lawnmower. We were so excited to make YouTube content around our trading project. And it's been 157 days since we made our first video and published it on YouTube. We don't have any excuses, but we did move and we had to renovate the apartment a little bit. So that took about a full month. It was like holidays and then we had to renovate an entire house by paying the entire house, which took all of our effort. And we didn't really want to make videos at that time. But we're back. So if you haven't watched our first video yet, we're putting these out around our trading project. We're trying to trade a flash drive all the way up to our student loan debt total, which is about $131,000. Even though we haven't been making videos recently, we've still been trading. So we're up to trade 13. Nope. <laughs> up to trade 15. 15. Okay, we're up to trade 15. We still want to make videos around the previous trades that we made. So we're gonna block them up into groups of five and make three videos for you guys to keep to get you caught up. The motivators for all of these trades, um, not just our behalf, but other people's behalf is kind of this concept of like intrinsic value and we're not gonna get into the weeds of what all that means right now. And we're gonna put out a video probably in the spring of kind of some of the motivators and philosophical reasons of why people make trades. But for now, uh, we're gonna link in the description a video uh, it's a TED Talk by Cal McDonald, who's kind of the pioneer of the red paper clip to a house trade. Um, and that does a really good job of explaining kind of like what we're endeavoring on and, and why these trades happen. And you know, it's kind of important to know that most of these trades have happened where people don't even understand our project. So it's not like they're trying to become a part of our project. They don't really care about our project, to be honest. And yet we still kind of manage to jump in value, most of them. Um, so that kind of brings us to the first trade. Our very first trade, it was one of the hardest trades we've ever made. Um, I cold messaged uh, hundreds of people on Facebook. And probably more. Yeah, probably, probably more than hundreds. And I think the hardest part was we picked an item that was honestly like, for some reason people thought a flash drive meant we were trying to give them a virus or something. And there were so many people I reached out to. It was, they were giving away something for free on Facebook and they didn't even want anything in return. And I was like, hey, I'm willing to take this off your hands if you take this flash drive for free and that turned off the trade. We were trying to pick an item that would be symbolic of our student loan debt so we picked a flash drive and it ended up kind of hindering us in making our first trade quickly. Yeah, I, I would say of all the trades that I just mentioned didn't happen because of the story. Luckily, the first one typically does happen because of the story and we were lucky enough uh, Somebody in college, uh, she was trying to get rid of it, all of her furniture because of COVID and she needed to move out of her apartment really quickly. And so she was selling this chair that was probably worth like 20 or $25. It's like a folding fabric chair you see in a college dorm uh, for $5 on Facebook Marketplace. And I kind of reached out to her and explained the project. And she even said, she's like, as long as there's no viruses on this freaking flash drive, we'll take it. And so we'd worked out kind of uh, eight days into our birth of our project, we made our first trade. So we, we get this dome chair, we post it on Marketplace again, we try and highlight our story in, in, in the post to try and trade it. We get no bites again and start cold messaging a ton of people, people just selling items we think are a little bit of a step up and come across this thing called a mobility kit. and. Uh, he seemed pretty interested in making the trade. We were really excited when we got the mobility kit trade because even though it was only a $20 jump, it was still a pretty significant amount for us because we were now at a $50 item from just our free flash drive. And the mobility kit was just a foam roller and a massage ball for like an athlete, but it was still, it still proved to us that we knew this process was going to work even if we only had to make smaller jumps like this. What was pretty unique about this one was this is uh, the first time we ever decided 
maybe to kind of risk it for the biscuit here. And <laughs> we had the trade agreed upon, but we had about a three or four day window uh, before we were gonna go and like actually drive and make the swap. And so we said, screw it. We just started trying to trade the item we didn't have in hand yet. And we kind of lined up two in a row, which was insane. Like I mentioned, we had this trade lined up. We had three days to kind of maybe start trying to trade it before we got it. And you know, there's a little bit less risk when these items aren't worth as much money. We've kind of learned our lesson on these more expensive items now. But uh, you know, we had a $50 item, and in those three days, we had actually lined up something immediately after. So we were going to drive from where we lived at the time uh, to the first trade, and then from there straight to the second trade. Um, and that second item was probably the first real jump we saw. I mean, we, we thought zero to 25 to 50 was incrementally large, and then all of a sudden we had this $150 snowboard in our hands. We ended up trading that snowboard for a Google Nest. Another kind of crazy jump for us. Like I said, we thought 50 to 150 was kind of big. And all of a sudden, we're at 250 like a week later. And you know, again, we drove out to the trade and made the swap. It was it was kind of an interesting swap. Um, we ended up realizing there was a few parts missing from the box, which is a kind of a whole different story. But it ended up not being a big deal. That's on TikTok if you want to go <laughs> <laughs> see that extravaganza. Yeah, and you know, this whole project from the very beginning, we thought. Okay, these are all the items we're gonna trade for. We're gonna look for this type of item at $50, this item at $100, $200, etc. And we never traded up until that point for any of the items we thought we were gonna be trading for, except the Google Nest thermostat was always on our radar for some reason. I thought they had like good trading value. Turns out the Google Nest thermostat was not a very smart <laughs> item. <laughs> Either everybody had one or they didn't want one. Yeah, if you live in, in the greater Boston area, nobody owns their house or apartment and therefore nobody cares about smart thermostats. <laughs> so like we said, that Google Nest thermostat proved to be not the easiest item to trade. Really nobody had any interest in a smart thermostat. You know, I highly overestimated the market for that item. Um, this next trade though is pretty amazing because it's the, the first Carly trade. <laughs> it was my one and only <laughs> shining moment, and I was way too excited about it. And it was the first time we split an item. Um, so I reached out. I was reaching out because we were struggling. John was struggling um, trying to find somebody, so I thought I would give it a shot. And I reached out to this guy for an Apple HomePod. And he actually agreed to it, but I looked it up and they're actually on sale for about $100 less. Yeah, it's funny because I, I remember when she said, oh, we got offered, like, the guy with the HomePod said, yeah. And I was like, all right, let me look around. And they're like $300, but like she said, you know, they're on sale for $200 and they keep going on sale for $200. And it's like, we don't really want to risk. That could be a new permanent price. We didn't know. And so before he even made a counter offer, I was like, all right, let me see if he has anything else on Marketplace that he's selling. And I see it like a few things, like an old TV, we weren't really interested. And I saw it the lawnmower and I texted her. I'm like, if he gives us the lawnmower, do not say yes. We do not want the lawnmower. And lo and behold. We took the lawnmower. <laughs> we took the lawnmower. <laughs> but it was, it ended up working out. Yeah. And I mean, we wouldn't be where we are today without that lawnmower. So we're pretty excited about it. Thanks for the lawnmower. Yeah, thank you. So I think that's gonna be kind of where we're gonna end this first video and you know, kind of take some time and try and get the next five trades captured into one video and, and hopefully once we get two more of those out, you know, we're gonna do a lot better job at getting content of all the ins and outs and behind the scenes because these, these projects are so, so intense and there's so much work and they're so exciting and then so not exciting when trades fall through. And you know, we feel like a lot of times any of the kind of historical trades that have happened like this or some of the current ones that people are following on social media 
they're really just highlighting the actual trades themselves and there's just so much more to this process. It's, an, it's like a full-time job that we operate. And that's a wrap.